Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm talking to you today about my comic pickups for April 6, 2022. But first, please be sure to subscribe, like the video, and comment down below what you're picking up this week. I'm dying to know whatever he's getting. There is a couple of really interesting choices this week. Uh, it's a smaller week for me, so we're just going to dive right in and see what's up. Started off with Alice Ever After number one. This is a brand new boom comic, and... Honestly, this grabbed my attention based off of the covers, really. Uh, Jenny Frizen does a cover, and then so does J. Scott Campbell. So already that's very, very interesting to me. So I dove a little deeper to see what this book was a little bit about. And really, it's about Alice's addiction and wanting to go to Wonderland. She went there once as a child, but now as an adult, she's still thriving for that world. She's still wanting to go back to Wonderland. And it seems much more darker tale of Alice in Wonderland. It definitely dives more in her like trauma as going to Wonderland and things like that. And really about her facing her demons and gaining up courage to really solve this mystery of Wonderland. So for me, it sounds pretty darn interesting, so I'm probably going to pick that up. And yeah, Boom usually doesn't ever let me down. Also picking up Batman 122. This one is written by Joshua Williamson. And this is going to tie into the Shadow War Alpha that came out last week. Ra's al Ghul is dead and Talia al Ghul is out for revenge. She is super pissed off that her dad is dead. So Batman is pretty much on the case to go find Deathstroke because he knows Deathstroke's in big trouble if Talia gets her hands on him. So essentially it's going to be this back and forth and i'm kind of excited to see where this one goes i have been enjoying deathstroke in quite a bit so having the batman robin intertwines it's going to be kind of interesting to see this family affair uh kind of unravel also picking up batman neo year number one this is a brand new batman beyond comic and i am very 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 excited it's written by colin kelly and jackson lansing drawn by max dunbar and this is the first year that terry mcginnis is not going to have bruce wayne so terry mcginnis is ultimately feeling incredibly rejected in neo gotham and he doesn't quite know how to handle himself without Bruce and he's really turning down this kind of unraveling path and is he really becoming the true Batman that he wants to be uh, so now it seems like the city is against him and like what is he gonna do with that what is he gonna do to in gain the city's trust again and I find that super interesting because every time I've always known Batman Beyond he's always had Bruce with him so having him kind of be on his own gives him that ability to expand and really be something else and this one looks like there's going to be brand new villains in this as well so if you're really a villain spec that's going to be highly sought out after i absolutely love the christian ward cover i think it's fantastic so really looking forward to a new batman beyond also picking up Batman Killing Time number two. This is written by Tom Keen, drawn by David Marquez, and this is really just continuing his Batman Catwoman story. It really dives with Catwoman and the Riddler and how they kind of pulled off their scheme that they've talked about in Batman Catwoman. And in this one, it looks like it's gonna be introducing a new villain known as the Help. So could be interesting. Uh, this one really, I kind of sell this as like a time point to the movie because it has Catwoman, Riddler, Penguin, and Batman in it so it does tend to have all those same characters but it is drastically different so excited to see where this goes. I hope it does pick up some pace. I did think the first issue was just a little slow for my taste but hopefully it gets better. I can't wait for Devil's Reign number six coming out this week as well. This is the final issue of Devil's Reign, and I am excited to see where Chip Zdarsky and Marco Cicchetto is going to go with this, especially with their brand new Daredevil number one. So after the end of the events of the last issue with Kingpin just absolutely losing it, uh, what is Daredevil going to do? How is he going to get him back? How is he going to, you know, go up against him, especially Kingpin? Kingpin thinks, you know, Matt Murdock slash Daredevil's dead and that they're the same person. So, you know, seeing Daredevil come back to fight him is really going to throw him off guard. And 
Purple Man has been an incredible force of power in this, so can't wait to see how this ends. This might be my favorite event of the year so far, so I've really, really been enjoying this. Also picking up Dynamite Never Dies, number two. I really like these comics because I think they're just fun zombie comics. They intertwine lots of Dynamite characters, and I think that's just like a really cool taste. And honestly, the Tony Flex cover A's are really cool. I love homage covers. The fact that they do crazy horror movie homages, I just find very, very fun. Having this evil Red Sonia, this Vampirella fighting zombies, you know, and in this one, it looks like we're going to be getting Tarzan. So I'm really, really excited to see how all those pit up against zombie John Carter and zombie Tahaya Thoris. So really, really excited, and I can't wait to see how this plays out. Also, Firepower returns. Firepower number 19. And Robert Kirkman is known for introducing characters at issue number 19. So, highly expected to have a brand new character. This one looks like it, his name is Master Shun. And he could be a really, really important character. I am really looking forward to this. Um, so, I mean, Robert Kirkman, I think, does a really great job. I love martial arts comics. I think they're very fun, action-y, and honestly, I've been really hyped for this issue specifically because Walking Dead, number 19, you get Michonne. You know, Invincible, number 19, you get a new character. So, I'm hoping this character is, like, a really big deal in this world, and I think this book is super underrated, and I feel like if or when it gets picked up for a TV show or a movie, it's going to then become very popular. So, personally, I've really enjoyed Firepower, and I'm so glad that it's returning. Also have Lego Ninjago Garmondon, number one. So, I am a pretty big Lego fan. I love building Legos. I love playing the video games. And when I saw this announced, I thought that was such a cool idea. I think the Lego world could really expand and you can even make like your own creator own Lego comic. And I just, I find that so cool. So to have this Lego Ninjago comic, if it sells really well, it could really open up some crazy new ideas for Lego comics. And I think that would just be so interesting to have this image world of Legos. I mean, I, I'm just like a really big nerd and I think it's really fun and I, I'm really looking forward to this. I think and hopefully it is a really well done comic and I hope I have a lot of fun with it. Also, my pick of the week, it's going to be Little Monsters number two. It's written by Jeff Lemire, drawn by Dustin Nguyen, and boy, I can't talk enough praise about this comic. I think it is so thrilling. It's a great new series to pick up, and honestly, it reaches such a broad vast of horror, action, adventure, uh, coming of age stories. It's really a lot and I love that about it. I think the art is beautifully done and rendered. I think the characters are so unique and well thought out. I pretty much remember a lot of their names which is always a great sign to me when you remember characters names in comics because it means you get attached to them and you become you know interested in what they're doing and I'm very very looking forward to see how these children can survive in this zombie or my bad vampire post-apocalyptic world and at the end when you find that man it's kind of scary so really looking forward to see how and what they do with him and how this progresses also picking up moon knight number 10 i mean with the release of moon knight on disney plus Jen McKay is doing a fantastic job at writing Moon Knight. Personally, it's one of my favorite Marvel titles at the moment, and I think it's just really, really fun having this Hunter Moon character pitted up against Moon Knight, and I think that's just like an interesting way to show the different ways that Khonshu can, you know, choose his weapon, and I think that's just really, really interesting to have them together and see maybe which one's a little bit more dangerous in the aftermath so hopefully moon knight is going to kick some ass in this issue and i can't wait 
Radiant Red number two releases this week as well is number two of five and I really enjoyed the first one. I thought the first one was a very interesting backstory to give to Radiant Red. You really feel for her. You really make her not seem like such like this bad guy that she was in the beginning of Radiant Black. So having us see a more progression and a more development of this character really makes you like this character more. So I am I'm very excited to see her more in Radiant Black as well as her home series so looking forward to this fun ride. Also Red Room Trigger Warnings number two releases this week. Red Room is a guilty pleasure of mine. It's written and drawn by Ed Piscor and Red Room is it's banned in a lot of countries. <laughs> um, it, it's definitely not for the faint of heart. It is all about dark web and how the dark web can show, you know, torture and killings and how people make money off of that. And it's really disgusting, but I can't look away. It's one of those comics where I just have to read it. And then after I read it, I feel disgusted with myself that I liked it so much, but it's really good and it's really well written. And I, it's just so nasty that I just, I find it interesting. So I'm, I'm very, I'm, I'm excited for this, but I'm also a little nervous and queasy. So <laughs> Yes, that one's also coming out this week, but it also has a really interesting Peanuts homage that I find really funny, and yeah, no, it's brutal, what can I say? <laughs> also, She-Hulk number three releases this week, written by Rainbow Rawwell, and at the first issue, I wasn't too invested, but I did think the second issue got better, so I'm hoping the third issue really stands out. I don't know much about Jack of Hearts, so I am learning about him as the story goes on, and I do find that kind of interesting. I never really knew that he died, came back now, so kind of figuring him out and what really his motive is and why he's really here. Does he really like She-Hulk? Um, I'm just hoping for a lot more funny sexiness out of this book, so can't wait to see more of that. Also, Spider-Punk number one releases this week. Woo, I'm excited for Spider-Punk. I think Spider-Punk is one of the coolest people in the Spider-Verse. I think Spider-Punk is unique. He is the anarchy in the Spider-Verse. He is everything that a lot of people want to be. He's like this crazy rock and roll hipster punk head. And, you know, he's just really, really cool. So in this one, it looks like he's there to protect Earth-138, his Earth. And and he has an axe in his hand as chaotic band of punk rock and heroes backing him up. But Norman Osborn is dead, but will the chaos he's created too much for Spider-Punk and his gang to handle? So, super looking forward to this. There's some fantastic covers as well. I love the 1 in 25 Del Mundo, but can't wait for this. Also, Strange number two releases this week. I really enjoyed Strange one. I thought Strange one was a very fun take of this universe. When a character dies in any universe, you get him, get them to really, in your head, think like, mm, they're not going to be dead dead. They'll survive. They'll come back later. And in this book, they definitely make fun of that. Uh, Clea is now in control as Sorcerer Supreme, but nobody appointed her that way. She kind of just made herself that way. She's married to Doctor Strange, so why can't she be Sorcerer Supreme, you know? And who else is there to claim in the first one, Doctor Doom? She pushes him aside, you know? You cannot have it. I am Sorcerer Supreme, and what are you going to do about it? <laughs> and I really loved that. I thought that was very feisty and fun. I think Clea is a great choice. And she even mocks like, you know, I bet Doctor Strange is on his way back like now. <laughs> um, so I just find that really cool. She's not even invested into like searching for him that much. She's just like, he's going to be back. He's going to come. He's going to be here just like every other hero. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to seeing this. And at the end of issue one, we had a character come back to life. And I'm excited to see where that goes and what his real purpose will be in this issue. So really, really excited. 
also pick it up Walking Dead Deluxe number 36. So I, this is my first time reading Walking Dead and I really love the colored version. I think it's really fun. I think the story is fantastic. It's definitely my soap opera. I get it every two weeks and I just get so happy and excited when I read it. And at the end of the last one, you find out that Martinez went back to the governor to rat out where they are, the prison. And in this issue, I'm hoping we're going to find out how this might play out. Will the governor's people come back? What's going to happen? I am just super nervous for everyone, and I hope everyone is okay at the end of this. I'm sure it won't be, but I could dream, right? <laughs> And last but not least, I'm picking up Wonder Woman Historia, the Amazons number two. It's written by Kelly Sudonic, and I fell in love with issue number one. Issue number one had these amazing, gorgeous panels that were just so Greek and fantasy inspired. And I'm playing Elden Ring right now, so it definitely reminds me a lot of Elden Ring. It's just so whimsical and fantasy based and I just really really loved that so in this one we're gonna have Jean Ha do the art so I'm looking forward to that uh, and we're really gonna find out more about Hippolyta and how she's trying to reunite the women who saved her life and get all of the the goddess Hera and all of them back on her side because they definitely seem like they're leaning more towards men and Hopefully, they will cross paths again and everything will be peachy keen, but honestly, that's not how comics play out. There's always a cause, there's always a problem, there's always, you know, something incredibly drastic happens, so I'm sure something will happen, and... Honestly, I just, this is one of the prestige formats that I just take my time with. I just really invest in the art and go deep within it, so... Bravo to DC Black Label on that because I think their Black Label prestige formats are really great to invest in the art, uh, but the stories are really fun too, so can't wait to see how that one plays out. So that's going to be it for me. Those are all my comics that I'm picking up this week, April 6, 2022. Be sure to check out all these comics and many more at your local comic shop. Have a great day.